demonstrate that commitment, get creative. Order some takeout. Get some quarters for the laundromat. Figure it out. There are almost 100 human beings caged in an unsafe, unhealthy building right now during a pandemic. And per city ordinance, it's Sheriff Miyamoto's job to get them out. And it's our moral responsibility to hold him to it. Well, let's go. Thank you. Our next comment, uh, the phone number ends in 1977. I'm uh, unmuting you now. Hi, my name is Kylie and I work in San Francisco. In the letter this morning to the No New SF Jail Coalition and all of you, Sheriff Miyamoto told this committee his plan to keep caging people at County Jail 4 until renovations at County Jail 2 are complete and that he plans to continue using County Jail 4 to hold people who are transported in for court. This plan violates the May 12th ordinance that requires the city to permanently close County Jail 4 by November 1st, 2020. County Jail 4 is dangerous and inhumane and should be closed immediately. The building was marked for demolition and declared seismically unsafe in 1996, 24 years ago, and the city administrator said that the jail should be closed by 2019. The city has continually dragged its feet on this action for over two decades and it needs to be closed now. People incarcerated in County Jail 4 have reported dangerous health conditions, including noxious fumes like someone else mentioned, and sewage on the floors. Could you imagine yourself living in these conditions? The city just paid out a multi-million dollar settlement over the conditions at CJ4. Despite the sheriff's statements otherwise, CJ4 is well known for its dehumanizing conditions. Sheriff Miyamoto must move everyone out of County Jail 4 by November 1st. This committee, subcommittee must also hold each other accountable to following the law to close CJ4. Leaving people at CJ4 after November 1st would be illegal and inhumane. The Sheriff's Department is legally responsible to get everyone out of CJ4 before November, regardless of any construction project. This, sub this subcommittee must also ensure that we can close County Jail 4 and get everyone out of the dangerous jail immediately and must hold Sheriff Miyamoto accountable to the May 12th ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Melissa Hernandez. Hi, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Um, yes, we can. Thank you so much. So um, thank you so much for having me. As we outlined uh, in our June 10th letter, well, first of all, my name is Melissa Hernandez here on behalf of No New SF Jail Coalition. And as we outlined in our June 10th letter to Sheriff Miyamoto, our coalition believes that housing or holding any people at County Jail 4 after November 1st would violate the May 12th ordinance to shut down CJ4 permanently. We understand that the sheriff needs the CJ4 kitchen and laundry facilities. The compromise during the conversations to pass this ordinance was that he could keep using those facilities until the CJ2 facilities were renovated. We disagree with the sheriff's interpretation that this renovation gives his office a green light to keep caging people at CJ4 by virtue of working at the kitchen or laundry. And we certainly disagree that the sheriff can keep using CJ4 to hold people for court after November 1st. This subcommittee is tasked with planning the closure of CJ4, and it must ensure that the sheriff's plans at bare minimum follow the law. CJ4 must also be closed as soon as possible because as we all know, it is not earthquake safe. Every day that we keep using it, it will place people at an unacceptable risk of harm. So I urge this committee to hold Sheriff Miyamoto accountable to the ordinance and help us shut this down as soon as possible. Thank you. Next is someone whose phone number ends in 0052. Um, thank you everyone for the opportunity to voice my opinion and my concern. My name is Deanna, I work in San Francisco. So just to echo what some of my colleagues have said in this July 21st letter to No New SF Jail Coalition and all of you, Sheriff Miyamoto told the subcommittee that he planned to continue housing people at County Jail 4 until the renovations at County Jail 2 are completed, and that he plans to continue using County Jail 4 to hold people who are transported in for court. This is completely unacceptable and violates the May 12th ordinance that requires the city to permanently close the jail for November 1st, 2020. The building has been marked for demolition since 1996, 
and the city administration said that the jail should be closed by 2019. The city has lagged on this action for over two decades and can't delay any longer. I beg you to stop this bureaucratic stonewalling. The city just paid out a multi-million dollar settlement over the conditions at CJ4, despite the sheriff's statements otherwise. CJ4 is well known for its dehumanizing conditions. The sheriff's department said, We lost you for Hello, one minute. Yes, we can. Oh. Please continue. Okay. Despite the sheriff's statements otherwise, CJ4 is well known for its dehumanizing conditions. The sheriff's department said CJ2's kitchen hasn't even started yet to be rebuilt. So this continues to be delayed and may not even be done until April. The sheriff's department has a moral responsibility to avoid further unnecessary suffering. This subcommittee must hold Sheriff Miyamoto accountable to the May 12th ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Egon or Agon. Hi, um, I am 25 years old and I've been living in San Francisco my whole life. So this, uh, this jail has been slated for, you know, it's been slated for, slated as sizably unsafe since I was one. Um, what I wanted to say is that Matthew Friedman said that the most important thing to remember is that Sheriff Miyamoto is and has been committed to the closure of CJ4. Okay, sure. The most important thing for the sheriff is to show that they are committed to the safety and care of the inmates. Of course it is because that's how you'd have to appear in front of the public. But this is not about the sheriff and his commitments. This is about the safety and health of people who are subject to a system of racist police. This is about using prison labor to prepare meals rather than contracting meal preparation. This is about ignoring Carolyn Goosen and DA Chesabudin's question about considering housing people in CJ2, a childish strategy from the sheriff's department, but what can we expect? This is unacceptable. I think it is clear from Carolyn Goosen's comments that the sheriff's plan is in violation of the ordinance. Furthermore, the sheriff cannot continue to use CJ4 as a staging area. This is unacceptable, especially due to the possibility of delays in the court proceedings and because it is in violation of the spirit of the law. I would like to ask the subcommittee to hold the sheriff accountable to not house incarcerated people in CJ4 under any circumstances and to hold up the voices of the people who are clear and concise in their simple demands. Thank you. Next is Zach. Zach, are you with us? It looks like you're unmuted. Here, let's move on and we can come back to Zach. If uh, Zach, please feel free to type in if you'd still like to speak. All right, um, Zach, we can come back to you later. Um, the next commenter, the phone number ends in 7604, so I'm unmuting you now. Hi, my name is Jesse Wallets. I live and work in San Francisco. Like others, I emphasize the urgency that Sheriff Miyamoto is held accountable to the May 12th ordinance, requiring the city to permanently close County Jail 4 by November 1st. As was just pointed out, it's not enough to say he is committed to do it. It has to actually happen. Sheriff Miyamoto's disappointing letter indicates his plan to continue housing people at County Jail 4 until the renovations at County Jail 2 are completed, and he plans to continue using County Jail 4 to hold people who are transported in for court. This is completely unacceptable and illegal. 
The building has been marked for demolition since 1996. The city administrator said the jail should be closed by 2019. The city has lagged on this action for over two decades and cannot delay any longer. That is the whole point of the ordinance. Test. People incarcerated in county jail for continue to report dangerous health conditions, including, as we've heard, noxious fumes and sewage on the floors. The sheriff's department has a legal responsibility to get everyone out of CJ4 before November, regardless of any construction project. I'm sure the city can find creative solutions to close the jail on time, despite the challenges. Thank you to this subcommittee for hearing our concerns and for holding Sheriff Miyamoto accountable to the May 12th ordinance, closing County Jail 4 by November 1st, 2020. Thank you, Osvaldo Josie, for your clear moderation. It's very refreshing and appreciated. Thank you. And Zach, as I just mentioned in the chat, you are unmuted if you would like to go next. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, I'm really glad you're having this meeting here today and uh, hearing from the public about this important issue. Uh, I'm very concerned that this, uh, this jail is not being closed, uh, not just for the inmates that are there, but for the public safety. Uh, we have a virus that is highly contagious and spreading very quickly. Uh, in fact, in the news today, July 21st, uh, I believe it was the, uh, the Chronicle or the Examiner that mentioned that we are about to overtake New York in our numbers of infection. And leaving inmates uh, who will be, you know, eventually released um, and should be at some point uh, to be locked in this facility um, at risk for spreading this virus is inhumane, immoral, and as it turns out, actually illegal. Uh, May 12th, the uh, city supervisors on a vote, uh, actually before May 12th, from, from a 10 to 1 vote, voted to close this jail by November 1st. Uh, Norman Supervisor Norman Yee said, we are upholding uh, the public safety and also ensuring we do not allow this unsafe facility to continue operating, close quote. That is from our supervisor. And so I think it is very unjust and illegal and a violation of the public trust and the law for um, any person or persons to keep this facility open past November 1st. Uh, when someone is arrested for a crime, they do not get to say, oh, give me a little more time. This is a little bit hard to deal with. And so when I hear that from our public officials, that is highly, highly concerning. And I think we can have a better standard for our citizens, uh, inmates and, and free alike. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Our next speaker will be Izzy Ullman. I'm unmuting you now. Hi, thank you so much um, for giving all of this amazing feedback and questions. Um, I'm Izzy Ullman. I work for the Justice Center Legal and the United States of Jails Coalition. I already spoke about um, the importance of closing CJ4. I just want to respond to the under sheriff um, and some of the questions that Carolyn and Danielle posed. Um, particularly in regard to the kitchen. Um, it's very clear in the ordinance that folks can't be housed after November 1st, right? And, and there's been conversation once pushed with the under sheriff, um, Mr. Freeman, that you, you mentioned being able to access food from other resources, from um, delivery, from other contractors. And I would just urge that that be made Absolutely, the way that, that the sheriff's department is dealing with this, um, there can't be excuses. Folks can't be housed there. These conditions are extremely unsafe. You know, if God forbid, you know, a, an earthquake happens, folks in CJ4 will face likely death, right? Like we, we know that that's the situation there and, and that's not that's the elephant in the room um, beyond COVID and that has been for the last couple decades. Um, Beyond the, the food element, the court, um, there has been a discussion about folks being held there to go to court, and there's nowhere in the ordinance that says that that's allowed. Um, that sounds like an excuse. It sounds like a way to get around the ordinance. Um, there isn't, you know, a, an allowance for that, and, and the sheriff's department just simply needs to figure out other, um, another plan, because the ordinance states that CJ4 must be shut down November 1st, and no one can be housed there. 
Um, and this isn't the time to be creating excuses, saying that things are hard. What is hard is being in dangerous conditions, being subject you know, to, to the site um, of CJ4 by, by folks that are incarcerated there. So I would just really, really like to reiterate to the sheriff that these, these two points that have been brought up should be moot. There needs to be some creativity uh, and folks should not be there anymore after November 1st, that's the law. Thank you so much. Thank you, Izzy. Our next uh, commenter will be Isabel Tayag. I'm unmuting you. Hi, uh, my name is Isabel Tayag and I'm a student at the University of San Francisco. In a historical moment where decarceration and abolition are at the forefront of national discourse, the closing of the dangerous and decrepit County Jail 4 was a huge step toward, for, forward in that fight. I'm calling today to highlight and oppose Sheriff Miyamoto's decision to continue to keep County Jail 4 open despite the May 12th ordinance that so many organizers, public officials, and community members fought for. This decision is immoral, undemocratic, and illegal, and this subcommittee must hold Sheriff Miyamoto accountable for that. I also want to add that instead of using the unpaid labor of incarcerated people as a way of feeding other incarcerated persons, why not source that food from one of the many local businesses that is struggling right now during this pandemic? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Isabel. Our next speaker will be someone whose phone number ends in 4887. I'm unmuting you. Hi, everyone. This is Jesse Stout here in District 6 in San Francisco. And since we've already heard from the Sheriff's Office and the Public Defender on this particular agenda item, I want to address my comments to the remaining subcommittee members. Uh, I see Tara, Tanya, Allison, Jasmine, and I guess Beverly has left already. Uh, so we see that the Sheriff's letter today says that they're planning to keep the jail open after November 1st for the purposes of having people work in the kitchen and apparently sleep there and have holding cells during court dates. But the justification just isn't there. We saw in the ordinance, subsection D, notwithstanding the deadline for closure of CJ4, the sheriff may use the seventh floor for administrative kitchen and laundry purposes, so long as the hall remain open. But incarcerating people in the county jail is not an administrative kitchen or laundry purpose. So it seems just clear from the plain reading of the May ordinance that it will be illegal for the sheriff to proceed with the stated plan of continuing to incarcerate people in CJ4 after November 1st for the purpose of having them sleep there to work in the kitchen. And it's up to you, the remaining members of this Safety and Justice Challenge subcommittee, to hold the sheriff accountable, to serve your role as voting members, and to proceed with a different progress plan, to have a progress report and a stated plan whereby County Jail 4 will indeed be closed as required by the law, and by morality as stated by our other public commenters today. So again, I would just ask you to please proceed with the closure plan. The other objection that is necessary for social distancing seems way off because the answer is not to keep CJ4 open for COVID social distancing, but rather to release additional people and book fewer people until it's possible to safely incarcerate fewer people in San Francisco and we can comply with the law to close County Jail 4 entirely by November 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Up next is Viju. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Viju, and I work in the city. Um, and as folks have previously mentioned, I would like the subcommittee to hold the sheriff accountable to close the jail by November 1st. And by closing the jail, I mean don't incarcerate anyone there. Keeping folks in these inhumane conditions is immoral and dangerous and has been for more than 20 years. And like because of the, or of the ordinance that was passed, it's now illegal. And similar to what Jesse said, I would like encourage this subcommittee to challenge the sheriff to use laundry and kitchen services in other ways rather than the facilities at CJ4. And 
In my opinion, I'm not sure why the sheriff is dragging their feet. As Isabel mentioned, abolition and decarceration are on a national level. The Board of Supervisors passed historic legislation closing the jail, putting San Francisco on the right side of history. And this subcommittee has the ability to keep us moving in that direction. And like, and like Jesse said again, this is like clearly illegal, clearly against the ordinance. And I really, really, really hope you all can hold the sheriff accountable and hold the city accountable. But yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Up next will be Austin C. I'm going to unmute you now. <clears throat> Hello. Can you, can you hear me all right? Hello? We can. Thank you, Austin. All right, all right. Just making sure. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the host for organizing this uh, situation as well in these odd times where we cannot publicly meet. Um, I am Austin Gompa. I'm a bike courier in the San Francisco Bay Area for at least a decade now. I'm currently out of work due to COVID-19. I um, just wanted to say that uh, just from, from what I've seen um, out of the sheriff's department and being someone who actually has, I'll use the term, visited 850 Bryant um, on a few different occasions, I've personally seen kind of an intent on uh, keeping conditions as they are. Obviously, um, oftentimes they'll cite things like funding, um, which is a pretty hilarious excuse considering uh, recent um, investigations into police budgets and uh, the skyrocketing amounts of money they have uh, for things like tanks and riot police. So um, I think it's another oddly convenient excuse that what they found is a loophole considering that they would house inmates there for kitchens and laundry uh, purposes considering that those are not administrative. This is um, completely just obviously a type of way to just continue operations there. So the intent, again, is that they don't really want to close this, uh, considering it has been condemned for 20 years now and still operates. So um, I think that there's an obvious lack of accountability, accountability, excuse me. Um, the under sheriff used the term committed multiple times uh, to kind of describe the sheriff's stance on it. Um, seems the sheriff was so committed uh, that he couldn't even attend this public meeting or is even listening in as far as I'm concerned. So uh, shows some commitment there. Um, during the COVID um, time, it's I think lucky uh, what, from what I heard, they only have, was it one patient that was positive or something like that? Or it just seems extremely lucky that they're not dealing with the uh, COVID uh, situation that uh, San Quentin is right now. And it's only a matter of time before something like that spreads in such a community. Um, so again, the health concerns, are pretty much go without saying. Um, outside of the already decided upon uh, terrible conditions that the jail is itself in, seismically and um, health-wise. Um, so these things are unbelievable. To me, they're unsurprising, given my knowledge of how the policing and SF works and just budgeting in general, um, but doesn't make it any less unacceptable, to be completely honest, to completely echo what everyone has basically said in this situation, and honestly, this, the, uh, the excuses are just gonna be endless. So we'll, uh, I'd like to see what, uh, what comes of this. Uh, 